Hey guys, welcome to Triple Painting. Come on in. Let me show you around. And this is Ashley. Hi. And she's going to be the first one you talk to if you call Triple Painting. Next office we have is Jeanette. Hello. She handles all the scheduling, keeps everybody straight. And then way down the hall in the back, not intentionally, is Nick. <laughs> and Nick does the majority of the sales here. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> nice. Nice. We're going to an exterior job that Weston's been working on for the past week. So the house was probably built in the 60s, had uh, brick on the lower half with aluminum siding up top, neither had ever been painted, and the client wanted to paint both. So we painted the brick, the lower uh, brick, one color, the upper aluminum siding was a different color, then the trim was a third color. So really sharp color change on this house. We found it's easier to take someone who has the right attitude and shares our core values and train them how to be a painter than it is to take a painter who doesn't want to learn anything new and try to fit them into our culture. So. My name is Tammy Carr. Um, I live in Saline, Michigan, um, and I'm the founder of co-founder of the Chad Tuff Foundation. Um, Chad uh, is my son, and he passed away after um, being diagnosed with a brain tumor called DIPG. And we started the Chad Tuff Foundation in his honor to um, fight the disease that took him from us. You know, when Chad died, it was a, a lot of people wanting to do something to help, and we realized we had a platform to create some change around this disease. There's a zero percent survival. Well, we've been doing the business of the Chad Tuff Foundation for the last five years at my dining room table. And um, it came to a point we've grown significantly and it's become too much. And, and really it's important for us, for our family, to have some separation too. We've got great people that work with us now and it was time. So we had, you know, a space that would, was um, philanthropically, you know, leased to us um, and people came together from triple painting to, you know, different groups coming together to help us to create a space that's going to work well for us. Um, but they did it with a philanthropic heart, which is amazing. People want to help and we don't always know how to allow them or what to ask for. And when this space became a reality, you know, Todd and uh, he was the first person we called knowing that he has a giving heart to do things that impact the community. So the answer was a quick yes when we asked him to help out on this space and so many other people have done just the same. Todd's sister-in-law um, was my son's preschool teacher. My oldest son who's now 14. So we're talking like back in the day. So it's just, you know, in the community, it's a small community. People know each other. People, um, you know, his wife Sherry and I are friends. So, um, and I know he's done a lot of good things around the community for other nonprofits. Came and looked at the space and said, all right, we're gonna do everything we can do to make it, you know, great for you guys. And they've been ahead of timeline and um, we're really excited to get in here. It's gonna be great to have a location where everybody can come um, and brainstorm and really work together more because we've been doing amazing work um, in our pods, but I think when everybody is able to come together in one place, it's gonna be amazing. Oh, hey, come on into my house. Let me show you where we're staying. So we've got, over on the right side, we've got this tiny kitchen. This is a 19 square foot house that we're staying in. We've got our tiny uh, sink. This is great for uh, very rectangular pans and plates and things like that, or just straight knives. We call this the bathroom. So we've got um, the tiny mirror. So it's a great, it's a three dimensional mirror. So absolutely gorgeous these days. Again, with the rectangular plates, if you've got like a, you know, a, a toothbrush or something that's about that size. Then we've got our um, stand up shower. Great for standing and showering. Okay, now if you come on up here with me, let me take you up to the top. Um, this is where, oh wow, it's way warmer up here. Mm -hmm. So this is the other bed. This is also where the magic doesn't happen because again, it's just uh, it's too small for anything. So that's the house.
Yeah, next place we're going is uh, Ann Arbor Hills. I'm sorry, Newport Hills. It's another exterior, Erin Goulet's job. She was ready for a paint job and decided to change her color. So it's a color change, not much, but. I mean, this home, as you can see, is all cedar sided, both trim and siding. And it had been probably eight to 10 years since it was uh, last painted by us, so it was time for a paint job. It's all one color, but the client changed the color from what it was. It was a little darker previously, mm -hmm. and she chose to lighten it up. I think it looks really good with the brick and the, uh, the roof color. It's kind of turning a little purple. Was it? And okay, as it was fading. Like yeah, that wasn't yeah. what you were going for. She was actually the um, music teacher at the elementary school that both my boys went to. Oh, really? So, yeah, she's a great lady, great teacher, great client. Yeah, so we painted, you know, everything that's wood. So siding, trim, including the windows. You know, on a house like this, there's often a lot of caulking that needs to be done. The wood has a lot of movement. There wasn't a lot of scraping or peeling paint on this, but there was some. So we, we scraped all of that loose stuff off mm -hmm. and primed that bare wood. Did some wood replacement because she had some rotten wood. So Aaron's doing his final job walkthrough, so just walking through with the client, make sure she's happy, just explaining what they did, and uh, yeah, taking care of any touch-ups if there's any needed. Just making sure we met the client's expectations, so sure. when we leave, we know they're happy. I find it's easier to take care of the touch-ups while we're here versus they're sitting on their deck two weeks later and see something and have to call us back. Uh, we've been here since last week, so I think it was about a five or six day project. If you're up there and you see, you know, stuff that it's, it's, it's falling apart, I mean, how do you approach that? We'd let them know what, what we've observed, take a picture, show it to them, mm -hmm. give them an idea of what we think it's going to cost, have them sign a change order, mm -hmm. giving us permission to take care of it, and then we'd take care of it. So on the right hand corner coming up is NYPD Pizza, it's the best pizza in Ann Arbor. And then up here ahead to the, to the right of the stop sign would be the historic Michigan Theater. My father-in-law was instrumental in help save when it was going to be sold for a mall back in the 80s. We're going to go back to my house and uh, capture some more video. Well, I think when people are looking to hire a contractor, a painting contractor, any contractor, they, they have a lot of questions in their mind. And sometimes they don't know how to get those answered directly. So I think uh, being able to put those up on the site and have people educate themselves before they even contact us is, I think, benefits us all. Well, what fulfills me, I think, on a day-to-day -day basis is, uh, is that support that I give to my staff. Seeing them grow, watching them evolve in their positions, that, uh, that's what brings me joy day-to-day. -day. I like to see people uh, be challenged and, and grow from it and, and learn new things. And uh, I find that when people around me grow, that, uh, that our company's better and our clients are happier. Well, I think people want transparency. They want to know who's coming to their house before they come to the house. And this is a way to do that. What motivates me to come to work every day is, is my employees, seeing them grow, seeing them you know, move forward, uh, interacting with them. Over here is one of my favorite Father's Day gifts from my boys. It's a picture of me when I was probably 10 years old and my oldest and youngest. So it says like father, like sons, kind of kind of cool. Of course, you got the big house. I'm a big Michigan fan, love, uh, love Michigan football, although it can be frustrating at sometimes. This is my oldest son, Brock, in his class picture this year. He does not wear glasses, but he decided it'd be funny to wear glasses. So it is what it is, we just let it go. This is my youngest son, Blake. Um, he's just a good spirited, hardworking kid, a lot of fun to be with.